Hello once again Monster Hobbies slot car fans. <laughs> My name is Trevor Ursulescu, owner of Monster Hobbies of course. So something interesting happened a while ago, actually before Christmas. One of my customers uh, wrote to me on Facebook asking me about doing a slot car conversion for him. So the package has arrived. This has come all the way from Italy. Unfortunately, let's see what it says there. It basically says uh, opened and resealed by customs. So the customs department had a nice little look at this and I, I don't know how badly they crushed this thing. I hope it's going to be okay. But anyway, it's a slot car conversion coming all the way from Italy. I'm taking one slot car and I'm putting a different body on it. So let's go down to the table, open this thing up and see, you know, how and, you know, the journey of this thing and when it went through. So uh, let's check that out. So this is the first time I've actually done a custom slot car um, project for anybody. So this should be interesting. Oh, come on. I already know what this guy wants me to do, but it's a nice surprise for, for everyone out there. Oops, of course. Oh good, it doesn't look like it got too destroyed, thankfully. Oh, cool. So what he has here is, this is 125th scale, so quite a bit larger. It is, of course, a Porsche 911 GT3. Now he saw this conversion on a YouTube channel, so I'm going to try to see if I can pull this off, hopefully. And here's the second part. We have a die cast Back to the Future DeLorean with the opening doors. <laughs> no windshield though. Okay, but anyway, oh, broken off mirror. So it's got a few screws in there, which I can always take out. Looks like it's got the, uh, oh yeah. I wonder if there's a lever for this somewhere. Oh yeah, right there. Ooh. <laughs> I think the uh, flying capacity is not going to be there for this. <laughs> anyway, here's another one. And I wonder if he's still got the uh, components in Italy. Oh yeah, it's missing quite a few. So I guess he picked these up out of a, a junkyard or something. Okay, so well, this doesn't have the fold down wheels. So this is the early version and the other version with the uh, flying package and the flux capacitor, I guess. Anyway, so my mission is to take one of these and put it on there. Well, I don't know. <laughs> the Porsche looks so much bigger, but we'll see how this goes. So anyway, I'm glad that this all came from Italy because I was beginning to wonder if I'd ever see it, you know, some of these things, right? So we'll see what we can do. All right, so here's a little look at the 125th scale Carrera Porsche. Now, what I didn't realize is this is brand new. Like, the box was not, not even, the seal wasn't even broken on the box, what I'm trying to say. So it's got the, uh, I don't get to deal with 25th scale too much, but it's got the big spring-loaded front clip here. And then the engine is sitting this way with wrapping into the gear sitting there. So now if you take a look at the Back to the Future DeLorean, the wheelbase is the same dimensions. The uh, back end looks like where the screws are is parallel, you know what I mean? Same with the front. So this could be quite an easy conversion. The only thing is looking at where the screw holes are. So you've got one here in the dead center front on the DeLorean and then two of the very edges on the outside, so I had <laughs> the Porsche in the way. Where the Porsche is, these are sunk in more into the center, and then of course you have four here. So I'm gonna have to build some kind of bridge in here for screws. Let's just take a look at this other DeLorean. Oh, it's the same, same screw layout. So this will be quite an interesting thing to change over, but I don't think it will be that difficult. Um, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, 
can always see. Let's uh, unscrew this thing here and just take a look. All right, unfortunately, I'm not able to take the car apart right now because <laughs> I thought I brought my tools today, but I didn't. But that's okay, because I will start working on this and film it in the basement as I build it. But uh, it's pretty cool to get these models all the way from Italy. And uh, hopefully I can do this thing some service. Although these are, um, you know, not perfect mint shape. There is quite a bit missing off of here, but I can hear some stuff rattling around. So maybe some of the parts are like underneath in here somehow. So we'll see how this all goes, but it should be a pretty cool, uh, oh, there goes the part right now. <laughs> should be a pretty cool uh, little assignment I've got. Hello once again, welcome back to the Monster Hobbies basement where all the fun and excitement happen. So we're gonna continue trying to mount our Porsche undercarriage onto the Back to the Future DeLorean. So uh, let's go down to my bench and see how I can do this. Here we have our Back to the Future car and of course our slot car here. So what we'll do is we'll just turn this over. You can see there's three screws mounting this car together. But then on the, on the slot car here there's four and the locations are quite different. So we've got two up front here and two back here. They're also tunneled quite a bit, so the screws are pretty far down in here. I'm not sure if the die-cast body is going to be able to, to work. So let's just take the screws out of this. Let's see what we're really up against. Up against the wall. <laughs> up the creek without a paddle? No, I don't know. Okay. So there's our big Carrera sitting there. Volts little digital headlights and all the other cool bits. The wheels are pretty secure in here, as they are off the back. Okay. Question is, can the Back to the Future car fit in this? Yeah, look at how tunneled that is up there. It's like some pretty big towers. <laughs> All right, let's just put that there. Make sure we get our screws out of the way. Okay, the Back to the Future car. Tiny screws in here compared to the Carrera. Very tiny. <laughs> okay, so there's the underbody. Now it's pretty cool to note that the wheels actually do line up perfectly. Oops. There. So. And the width is about the same. Question is. How does the rest of this go together? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> it's uh Let's take the interior out. Okay, so as you can see, the mounting points are not going to equal up, for sure. In fact, I don't even think this will drop in there. Oh, well, that's a problem and a half. Yes, we have a discrepancy for sure. Hmm. This is not an easy drop. So what would have to happen? I don't know. If I hack away at the front 
there. There's still nothing to screw this to is the problem. So what to do on that? Interesting question, isn't it? Yeah, it has to go right there in the front. So I could cut away at the bottom of the... of this. The front air dam. Could fit if I get rid of some of that. Let's see? And then whatever's up here would be hidden by the electro bumper, whatever you want to call it. And then back here... Uh, but then again, I don't know how the wheels are fitting in there. I don't want to do too much onto the the slot car part. It'd be nice to switch this to the AMT plastic kit. It might end up working better, but we don't have one. I got the two die casts. And of course they're the same. All right, I don't know. I have to figure this out. But while we're here, let's just see. Oh, the back panel would fit. Okay, it almost looks like the those notches there would fit perfectly right on the right going down into the the front axles on the Porsche. Let's see, I think all this stuff here would have to go. And it almost looks like it'd have to saw it off right there, right across the back of the firewall. But even then, like, am I gonna squish the Carrera digital stuff? And then how do you get around that? So next question. Stuff is not easy sometimes. I could definitely take out the the light bars here because on this it's just a sticker across the back. Well, maybe it's a transparency, but it's kind of all bolted up in there. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see about getting a plastic kit. Anyway. Let's just leave that for now. So first off, I think what we need to do is take the two cars and make them into one. And uh, so what we have here is we've got the original DeLorean from the first movie with, of course, the uh, nuclear reactor and all that. And then over here, we have the one that's got the Mr. Fusion. The problem is the top of Mr. Fusion is gone. Uh, here we're missing one of these um, coolers or whatever they are. Uh, what else? It's interesting, this one's got holes in here. I think that's, of course, for the wheels to fold into, whereas this one does not. Uh, and then we've got a, a, quite a bit of stuff missing off the top. So we could make one good one out of this, and I kind of think probably the original would be better than the flying car just because of the... Mr. Fusion and a bunch of the missing components. Whereas here they got a hole, you put a, a rod in there for the lightning, and then I can always take one of these and move it over, right? So let's try to do that. Uh, now the thing about this is the way they put these together, there's no glue, right? So they take a knife like this, and they'd heat it up, or a soldering iron even. They put the part in and then they press here and they melt it, right? So, in order to get that gone, what we need to do, of course, this is a number 16 hobby blade. I'm just going to, let's start with this seat here. I'm going to try to cut the melted bit away so that we've got something we might be able to pop out. Of course, there it goes. Interesting. Seat back is also a separate thing. So 
there it is. Now you can see we've got one Back to the Future seat. Now I'm going to be using my testers model glue and all the rest. There is some very bad seam lines, of course the brake where it was molded to the parts tree and all that kind of stuff. We can start cleaning this up. You know, basic model techniques. Get rid of our seam lines. Like I say, if I can't get the die cast mounted to that frame, at least I can give you a pretty decent looking model for your Back to the Future. All right, so yeah, that's what I'll do. I will continue cutting all these things out and then come back and show you guys. But let's just move this out of the way. I want to take a look at the two bodies. Now, I do believe this part of the kit is identical. The only difference, of course, is the license plate. The out of time is white on that one and yellow on this one. Um, I'm missing a mirror here. I'm missing whatever this thing is up here. But the rest of it, like I said, is pretty much the exact same. The only difference, of course, being the Mr. Fusion and the original atomic reactor thing. However, what I noticed on here is somebody used some crazy glue up here on these doors, and there's a big crusty blob of it. Now you can kind of see how bad that is. So I'll be using this body, uh, but I gotta get that one side mirror out of that door. It's just too bad it wasn't like this mirror was here, this mirror was missing, because then I could take this door off and put it over there. But no, it has to be the other way around. <laughs> of course, that's all our things. So again, there's our mirror there. I think it just just snaps into place. I don't know if it's heated, but what I can do over here is I got this screwdriver here. These are larger screws up here. is all the overhead stuff. screw. There must have been a windshield in this at one point in time, in both of them, but they're gone for whatever reason. So again, uh, what do we got there? Looks kind of just like a press-in-place sort of thing. Anyway, I'll take a look at this in a minute. The door panel would be pressed onto some pegs under here, I do believe. Let's just... Try to get it off. Hang on a minute. I had this with the hobby blade. Okay, so just pry that under there. Yep, this is just pushed on to little metal bags. There it goes. Now to try to get that off. Let's just move these out of the way. Oh, I noticed something here. <laughs> that crazy glue goes right underneath. So that must have been something that happened in the factory or something bizarre. Somebody being really sloppy with crazy glue. <sighs> okay, so... I'm just gonna take the knife underneath here and roll this up and try to get the original pin shape of the pin back together without the plastic squashed over it. Oops. Now I'm unscrewing the knife. 
Okay. Oh, it's still pretty tight on there. I hate to just slice it off because, again, that's... Move that finger out of the way. <laughs> oh, it's quite the thing. Little battle. Me against Thor. Oops, pulled the sticker right off of it. <laughs> okay. Got it upside down, of course. I just don't want to lose it. And Trevor get the mirrored sticker back into the mirror. Tune in next week when you will hear him say, dang it, I <laughs> got it upside down. I'm sticking off all the sticker on my fingers. Okay. That's amazing how much with the soldering iron this can get all mucked into there. Huh. All right. There we go. That's out of the one door. And then... Oh, looks like the uh, mirror broke off in this door. So then... I could just... There we go. Woohoo, we did it! Do, 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 do. Woo! Says Doc. Alright. So there we go, first step. One mirror over into the other thing. Um, now, question is, do I heat melt this one? Oh, I guess it wouldn't hurt. Okay, so I'll do the same thing they did. Heat up the blade. And then press. But what I want to do is I want to get these door panels off. I want to paint all this in here because this looks like junky cheap plastic oh. holy smokes of course this one's got to be tight seems like you got to go from the the back to the front on these all right, lots of cleanup to do. <sighs> yeah, it does look like there was a windshield in here because see up here they got the notches for the glass to fit in. Oh, there you go, I can see them there. So yeah, I don't know what quite what is happening. Anyway, this will look a lot better considering how nice that door is compared to the one that got the uh, glue all over it. <laughs> okay. Yep. Lots to think about. So here we got the DeLorean all broken into its little subcomponents, and it sure does look like at the end of the third movie when it got hit by the train. <laughs> um, I did figure out how it kind of all went together, which is quite interesting. But at any rate, so what I'll do is I'll start getting this together. 
And I still left the uh, Mr. Fusion version, I left that all together. So yeah, let's, uh, let's clean up the parts and then I'll take a look into painting them. So here I have my AMT Back to the Future car, and this one I built when the movie came out a long time ago, when I was just a kid. And I watched the movie on VHS a lot, and tried to get the colors that the thing was supposed to be. Not quite sure if it's right. And then here's our die cast sitting here. Notice the uh, quite different color, <laughs> color comparisons here. So this paint here was original Tester's Metal Master stuff. They don't make it anymore. But you can polish this stuff till the end of time and keep bringing up that shine. So I used a color called steel because the DeLorean, of course, is supposed to be stainless steel. Whereas this is more like a bright aluminum or just a silver. So notice a flat black bumper as opposed to the gray bumper. The black wires as opposed to the yellow ones and whatnot. So I want to turn uh, this car into this kind of thing. Unfortunately, this one has the full windshield and windows, whereas this one doesn't, which is a sad thing. But what I've noticed here is that the AMT kit, again, is the exact same size. So I'm thinking that maybe using the AMT kit will be better because you're not confronted with pins, metal pins and little teeny spots to try to mount it to when you've got this one. And this being plastic in here, see it would glue along the sides or whatever. So that means that I could put styrene sheet inside underneath the bumpers and try to catch those Porsche mounting points. So maybe we can uh, see if I can find another AMT model kit. But in the meantime, I want to at least give back one of these die casts and uh, try my best to make it, well, I'm not going to repaint this, but I'll, I'll make it look as close to the AMT model kit as I can. Especially the interior, which is just basically your your crummy gray plastic. You know what I mean? So let's do a bit of interior mods. So here's our interior, and I'm going to try to get rid of all these uh, flash mold marks and everything else that's being a pain. So I've got my sanding block here. This is my rough sanding block. So we'll just take it along. Try to, get, try to get all this rough stuff out of here. Just do the same up here. Scrape down the seam line bits. Use my number eleven hobby blade. Seam line goes up here. Just gotta chase it around a little. Get 
rid of the flash from the mold mark. Okay, and then there's going to be flash up along here and everything else, but I'll take care of that off camera. All right, so I cleaned up the interior tub, all the flash that was around it, and everything that was a uh, harsh seam line. And now I've got the dashboard here, and what I did was I broke out the little, like inside there's two pins, and there again are, are heat pressed through the back to keep the steering wheel and steering column in place. So what I did is I just broke them off so I could get the steering column out. And the steering wheel wasn't even really put in there. So now I can get that edge nice and circular as well as clean any seam lines off of there. Now one problem with the dashboard is that they this is a sticker for the instrument panel which isn't too bad. I could peel that off, put it back on again. This is simple enough to paint for me, but here they've got those three gauges that are, well, it would be a shame to paint over them. So I think what I'm going to do, well, what I need to do is get rid of this <laughs> off the bottom and any seam lines, but I'm going to try to do my best to keep this dashboard pretty much intact. I might paint down here, but it's interesting to note um, inside I've got it like a sort of a dark blue in there navy blue so I don't know if, what the color of the dashboard is supposed to be I'll have to see the movie again hopefully it'll show it but anyway so there's our sanding block and I'll just smooth this out no one's really gonna see underneath here but it still would be nice to keep it as smooth as possible and I do believe the plastic on this is ABS because when I uh, when I sand it, ABS has a certain kind of smell to it, something distinctive, a distinctive stink. <laughs> so anyway, it is sort of uh, pretty gouged up in here though, along that edge. That's what happens when you've got a part sticking to the sprue and you, you go like this and then bust it off. You You get that happening. So that's why they always say to to cut those off of the sprue trees, your parts, just so you don't gouge it. So they were just removing the seam lines along there. And then another one kind of runs up in here. So I will do that off camera and then we'll get on with this. So here I have all my interior components for the Back to the Future DeLorean got the back firewall because remember this was a rear engine car then I've got the four door panels because I'm taking two extras and then the seats and the seat backs and again as you can see it's pretty messy down there so what I'll do with these is just use the sandpaper again and my number 11 and number 16 hobby blade and just go around and clean all this up as with the rest of the parts and here's all our parts cleaned up Got rid of all the flash and mold marks and seam lines <laughs> that were around here. So now this should start to fit better into our interior. But of course it's going to need paint. Got the seats all nicely cleaned up. Now let's see. So there we go. Seat backs should fit in. They will need to be glued. Oh, missed a little up around the headrest here. <laughs> oh, I missed the whole seat. Okay. Well, I got one more to do, but anyway. There's the one that I did do. So they should fit in pretty decently. Get glued up around the side. And then both drop in. Just like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break for my lunch. And I'm going to watch Back to the Future and see what the car looks like inside and try to get an idea of the paints. So now we've got our parts all together. We're going to wash them. 
I'm going to use some Dawn because it helps wildlife. <laughs> anyway, all right, we want to clean all the sanding dust and everything off. So I'm just going to put a little nice warm water. Okay, so I was looking through my paint matches and I came across this gray. It's uh, very close to that plastic color. A little bit darker, actually. Um, in my researching, after I watched the movie, actually there's a special feature on how they restored the car. But all up in here, this is flat black. These little canisters that are sticking up are supposed to be red. There's all kinds of mistakes on this. So, we will put the cap aside. And then I will get some of this going. So let's start with the interior bucket. Now you don't want to brush your teeth with this teeth brush again. So, anyway. <coughs> now the reason why I use a dish soap is to get rid of any fingerprint grease or mold release agents or anything like that on the plastic. So that it comes out nice and clean. set off. Take this hand towel and set it aside over here. So one thing I'm not going to try to paint is the dashboard, but I hope that's not going to look too weird with the uh, everything else being painted the different gray. So we'll see how that goes at the end. But anyway, there's our seat. I think there's enough soapy water in here now not to uh, have to reload my paint or my toothbrush. So I'll just rub that down. This back panel is gray, but the parts on it are painted a different color. I think they used gray so that it would. Uh, the actors and whatnot would stand out more than the inside of the car and whatnot for the uh, film. There's the door panel, there's the other seat. Seat backs. Door panels. Most of the parts are accurate to the uh, movie, but there are still some that are not colored right. Oh, and uh, that that blue color that I did my old DeLorean in is completely wrong. <laughs> but I'm not going to pull that model apart to fix it. So. I'm just going to reach in the bottom here. I don't want any of the parts to go down the drain. That would be not good. And just rinse these off. And then I'll set them all to dry. Now here we are outside in the most well-ventilated area on planet Earth. <laughs> and now I'm going to use our grey spray paint here to paint our interior. i got both components. There's our seats. But we'll start here with the interior shell and the door panels. So, just going to... You want to move across in a nice straight line. everywhere with this. And 
There we go, nice and smooth. Now you want to use a respirator mask when you're spraying, even if you are outside. Wow, that's nice. Okay, let's get the other parts out here. Okay. Oop, there goes the dogs. Okay, now we just need to let that dry for 24 hours or more. Here we have our gray components just drying away in our little paint area. You can see how nice and smooth that ended up. There's our interior shell. Looking very nice, no runs, no drips, no sags. Now I just gotta give it some time, of course, to dry up. And then I can paint all the details in there. And that brings our video for a close for the day. I hope you enjoyed that. Tune back next week as I keep going.